evidence that we had was so strong against these club, this club, they just cut their losses and ran. A troublesome and dangerous local motorcycle club is shut down by city officials and the group's own national chapter. Good evening, everyone. For the last few years, we've been telling you about problems involving the Detroit Highwaymen. Local 12 has learned in a couple of stunning moves, the local chapter is now basically out of business. It's a story you'll see only here on Local 12, and Rich Jaffe joins us from Lower Price Hill with this rather unusual story, Rich. Rob, the highwaymen came to town and set up shop basically around 2009. Since that point, they have been in a turf war with the Iron Horsemen. This clubhouse became so problematic at this location, the city of Cincinnati recently moved to have this place declared a nuisance. And then on top of that, highwaymen honchos from Detroit came to town and shut this place down. Saturday evening, Cincinnati police showed up at the Detroit Highwaymen's Clubhouse and served them with a nuisance complaint from the city. It's a move aimed at shutting down the clubhouse. Any um, building, place, property that's used for gang activity, and you have two felonious offenses in a year uh, occur or, or start at that property can be abated under Ohio nuisance law. One of those felony offenses was when Roger Sadler allegedly shot at rival Iron Horseman right outside the clubhouse last year. The second offense came in February when highwaymen were captured on camera attacking an Iron Horseman and stealing his motorcycle. Halusik says in his 30 years with the Cincinnati police and ATF, it's the first time the city has used this approach on a bunch of bikers. For the highwaymen, Saturday night was a one-two punch, one from the city and one from their Detroit headquarters. We also learned that the um, National Detroit Highwaymen chapter revoked their charter as well. Ironically, just a week ago, the Bikers Detroit office sent one of their national muscle men, John Duffy, to Cincinnati to help this troubled local chapter clean up its act. Duffy, though, didn't exactly get a warm welcome from the Queen City. Yeah, we knew that there was a national officer coming to town, um, and we knew that he was on parole, and, and we learned some other things about him as well. Um, when he left here, he committed a traffic violation. He was speeding across the viaduct. One thing led to another, and he was subsequently arrested with a firearm. And he was here to fix the problems that were occurring. Um, he was elected the, the vice president of the organization that night. Duffy served federal time after he and dozens of other Detroit highwaymen were arrested by the FBI in Detroit following massive raids in 2009. Investigators believe the Cincinnati chapter had simply brought down too much heat and attention on the national organization. It's heat that could have led to racketeering charges on members of their Detroit hierarchy. We were playing a game of chess with people that were playing checkers, and our moves were pretty thought out, um, and, and we're going to continue down that path. We're not going to tolerate the gun violence. I'm not going to have people out here shooting in the middle of the street. Now, if John Duffy's convicted on that firearms charge for which he was indicted subsequently, he's probably going to end up finishing out his federal sentence. And just for perspective, the president of the highwaymen, after that 2011 raid when they picked up Duffy, he was sentenced in 2011 to 37 years in a federal prison. In Lower Price Hill, Rich Jaffe, Local 12 News. Rob? So, Rich, what happens to the bikers who no longer have a club? Well, that's a good question. The smart money says that they are probably going to merge with another club, maybe in the area or out of the area, and set up shop, hopefully someplace else. But one thing is for sure, the highwaymen will not be here again. Rich Jaffe, thanks very much.